Hi. Now we are going to learn accounting equations. Accounting equation is basically an equation between the assets and liabilities of a firm. So when we say accounting equations, this is one of the basic things in accountancy which introduces you to the concept of recording a transaction and seeing the effect on the assets and liabilities side. The accounting equation follows the dual aspect which is followed in all accounting whatever that will be doing later on everything will be um, based on the dual aspect only. So the dual aspect of accounting states that there is a debit for every credit. So according to this dual aspect there is a debit for every credit and the accounting equation that we have to remember is this assets is equal to liabilities plus capital. So this is the basic accounting equation which you should never forget and after every transaction in the accounting equation we can check whether our assets is equal to liabilities or not. If the asset side is not equal to the liability side that means you have committed a mistake in entering that transaction somewhere you have committed a mistake either in uh, putting the amount correctly or you have put the transaction on the wrong side or something like that. So here what we should remember is the asset side should always be equal to the liability side so don't forget this right now let's see the effects of the transactions now there can be a total of six e effects here the first one is increase in asset and increase in liability the second one decrease in liability and decrease in asset third one is increase in asset and increase in capital fourth one is decrease in capital and decrease in asset now these four transactions these four uh, effects that I have put the first four now you can see that these uh, effects are on both sides that is assets as well as liability or capital fine so here if there is an increase in one side there is increase in other side also so result will be the same that is the balance will tally same way if there is a decrease in one side there is a decrease in another side also so again the balances will tally understood but when we look at the last two it says increase in one asset and decrease in another asset decrease in one liability and increase in another liability so in these two I would say there is basically only one side the second last one deals only with the asset side increase in one asset decrease in another asset so the asset side remains as it is so after the transaction also the balance will be the same as it was before because that has been negated right same way the last one is in decrease in one liability and increase in another liability again it is affecting only the liability side and not the asset side at all so here these are two sided effects and these two are we can say one-sided so whatever be it out of these six the 
result will always be assets will be equal to the liability side okay now let's take a small example so that we understand it much better the first transaction ramesh starts business with rupees 60000 as capital now here i have put the assets and the liabilities plus capital cash is what comes in when ramesh brings rupees 60000 as capital and cash is an asset so cash is 60000 and capital is 60000 here liabilities is zero and i have to write the transaction here like i have written this capital introduced so this has to be written and the things have to be given like this right <coughs> now we can see that the effect of this is increase in one asset and increase in one liability right now let's move to the next one purchase machinery for 25000 in cash now here we are purchasing the machinery machinery is an asset so here we have machinery that is a asset right so what happens here is machinery is being purchased so here we have 25000 that is being added and cash is going out so that is minus 25000 right <coughs> so now we see that the cash balance has decreased by 25000 and it has become 35000 the new balance and machinery has become 25000 so the effect of this is decrease in one asset that is cash and increase in another asset that is machinery so here we see that after this transaction also the balance is equal to 60000 is equal to 60000 so that's what we want the next transaction is purchase goods for rupees 5000 in cash now when i say goods goods means stock in accountancy right so one more asset comes in that is the stock so cash plus machinery plus stock and the old balance is put the old balance of this transaction which we had done earlier 35000 plus 20000 is equal to 0 plus 60000 so this becomes the old transaction and the new transaction you are purchasing goods that means stock will increase by 5000 and cash will be deducted by 5000 right so here stock comes in and cash goes out right so again if you compare the balances the balance is again 60000 is equal to 60000 on both sides so the transaction is correct okay now for the next one we say here purchased goods for rupees 20000 on credit now here we are purchasing the goods means stock is increasing but we are not paying cash it is being purchased on credit so a new liability arises which is the creditors a new liability arises which is the creditors so here creditors are getting added by 20000 and stock is also getting added by 20000 stock is increasing and since we are not paying now we will be paying later on a new liability creditors has come in and that liability has also increased right so here we have increase in one asset and increase in one liability so again both sides will be equal now it becomes 80000 is equal to 80000 understood So now we move on to the next transaction which is sold goods for rupees 5000 on credit. 
now here we are selling the goods on credit so again no cash is involved so when we sell the goods on credit a new asset debtors comes in right so i'm selling the goods so means stock is becoming less so stock will be deducted and debtors are increasing i have to i have to get the money from someone so they become my debtors so both are assets stock is also an asset debtors is also an asset debtors increases by 5000 and stock decreases by 5000 so here again it is increase in one asset and decrease in another asset one sided transaction okay now let's look at this one paid rupees 5000 as rent here again i'm showing the old balance which was 80000 is equal to 80000 right the new transaction is rent 5000 is being paid as rent so 5000 is being deducted from cash and 5000 is being deducted from capital so for all the expenses like rent salary insurance premium etc right there can be other expenses also wages something like this so for all these expenses we'll have to deduct cash and deduct like uh, this capital right so there is a decrease in cash there is a decrease in capital decrease in one asset decrease in one liability right so again it is resulting in 75000 is equal to 75000 if you add up the asset and the liability side it comes to uh 25000 plus 25000 50000 plus 20000 plus 5000 so this is 75000 and the liability side is 20000 plus 55000 that is again 75000 so here again we are finding that the balance on the assets and liability sides are tallying right so whether it is paid rupees 5000 as rent or paid rupees 10000 as salary or any expense all the expenses will be dealt in this manner only So now we have seen how to deal with accounting equation how to uh, enter the accounting equations right and how to balance the assets and liabilities so with this in mind you will be able to do questions on accounting equations so with that i come to the end of this topic on accounting equation hope you have understood this Bye